LPT, you can always negotiate your rent, even if you have been living in the unit for years. I live in the heart of a pretty expensive city. I have been renting this unit for almost two years and rent was increased once by $100. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic the real estate and rental market in this city and surrounding areas has been shifting. I did some research and found units in the same apartment building going for $200 to $250 less than what I was paying. I simply stated that fair market value was no longer what I was paying and requested a re-evaluation. To my surprise, they agreed. Fact of the matter is that if I terminated my tenancy, they would need to look for someone else and would not be able to charge what they are currently charging me. The time, effort involved as well for them to find a new tenant weighs in as opportunity cost for the landlord as well. Long story short, do your research and always advocate for yourself. My girlfriend and I tried to do this. We were paying $1,900 a month for a rental house. And our rental company was going to raise that to $2,000 the next year. They had raised it $100 per month each year since we moved in. So we started looking at buying a house but first asked the rental company if they could work with us and keep our rent the same for the next year. That would have delayed his buying a house and kept us renting. But they remained firm on raising the rent. So we moved out and saw the house listed for $2,100 per month prior to moving out then $1,900 per month two months after moving out, and then $1,800 per month three months after moving out. If only it worked with every landlord. Mine just said take it or leave it. I've got people who want the two-bedroom. Man shrugging. We were paying $900 for a run. Similar ones are now going for $1,400 or more. In some areas it's best to take advantage of your current rate. Good advice. Loosely related but I do this every year with my car insurance. When it's time to renew I look up aggregator sites to check the best insurance deal. And 99% of the times I find one. Then I call my company and tell them I'm cancelling my policy. They immediately pass me to the person who tries and convince you to stay. I tell them of how much less I'd pay with another company. And they usually undercut that price. By usually I mean that I've been doing it for years and I actually ended up switching company just once. Which was okay as it was cheaper anyway. What fucking bothers me is that they can always afford to charge you less. And if you don't do this drama they're quietly taking from you more money than they should. I live in a major metropolitan center. High rents. Purposefully created housing shortage. Landlords have power and lobbied for tax breaks for vacant units and for 30 years had been allowed to increase rents above stabilized level just because they were vacant or made minor cosmetic upgrades. There is no incentive for them to reduce the rent because they've rigged the system. They get dollar 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 no matter what so they don't need you to the extent they would make any accommodations. So vote, vote for people who will remove regulations that incentivize income inequality. Stop voting for people who grease the wheels to make living harder. May not work in all cases but certainly a good suggestion to look into it. Most landlords of apartment buildings have a structured plan for rent increases like $25 more monthly after any year's lease has been fulfilled. Like companies with set, contractual, pay raises. Sometimes you just can't haggle. I mean, this only works in housing markets where housing prices are going down over time. Do those still exist in 2020? Grimace. When my wife and I moved to SLC 15 years ago, Thanks to a friend we had a place rented when we got here no storage. No interim apartments while we settled in. 1,500 square feet. 3 BR2 ba fenced backyard. 
one third acre for the dog do mainly to my health money drain our desired house buying never happened and won't dot but at least we're in a house same place rent in 2005 900 dollars rent in 2015 900 dollars bless his dutch heart in 05 900 dollars was the lower middle range can't get a 1br app here for that now and when we moved in new carpet sheetrock furnace and hot water heater yard was destroyed took three years to get it nice lotta my sweat but fun planning plantings best yard on the block until last year because i can't bend over i think my landlord would ask me what day i was planning on moving out if i even thought about renegotiating my rent the rental market in my area is absolutely booming from people still wanting to get away from the city and there is such a shortage on available places that my landlord would be an idiot if he didn't take advantage of it this is kind of true but also not really in many states disparate impact lawsuits means many big landlords just won't move at all they do what the model says that stay and nothing else i'm a landlord my rent is completely non-negotiable i add up the mortgage for the rental property the taxes insurance the utility bills i must pay in my area it's sewer and recycling that's what i charge for rent i'm not making money on my rentals if i break even each year i'm happy by the time i retire the mortgage will be paid off then i'll start making money on them so in my case there's no room for negotiation i suspect i'm one of the few landlords with this business model makes sense you just have zero negotiating power until the year's leases up or it's on month to month ultimately this is about leverage while your landlord would incur costs to replace you as a tenant they also know that moving is an expensive pain in the ass and so you aren't likely to move unless there's a serious problem with you place or the rent is over market price by an amount well in excess of your moving costs and if your landlord won't budge don't be afraid to consider buying mortgage rates are so low right now our complex wouldn't play ball this time so we ended up buying a home we nearly doubled our square footage of living space and are paying less than our previous rent even with the added utility expenses homeowners insurance etc we're netting to a smaller total cost for housing than what the rent would have been post increase a it would be easy that way they use the this or you can leave same argument i used for my renewal and mate got a reduction not bullshit i spent most of my career in asset management and underwriting for multifamily real estate rental apartments you absolutely should do some research every time you rent your lease and see where you could move if you had to how much it is and how much it would cost you to move just like when changing phone carriers many large complexes will give you a concession to assist with moving costs if the cost is less somewhere else bring your offer to your landlord of what it will take to make you stay if you mean it if they call your bluff oh well move to where you feel more wanted if you don't really want to move obviously don't do this there's something you like better about your current place that money just can't replace but at least you'll know sometimes this works sometimes this doesn't know the market value by researching your area there's a couple factors to consider such as market price and market demand once you understand those two things you will be in a better position to negotiate oh look another bullshit lpt post it may work with landlords that own one or two properties but most places are owned by structured companies and trying to haggle your rent is like trying to haggle at target if you enjoyed this video please check out our playlists full of similar content epic Aircast is like doom scrolling for your ears please like 
share, and subscribe.